What's up guys, I hope you're having a great day. I first want to start off by making an announcement. The channel now has a Discord channel. The Discord channel will be used for discussions on topics dis discussed on this channel, as well as a place to ask questions and just hang out. So if that sounds interesting to you, please come join us by clicking the link in the description. In my videos over GPT thus far, I've gone over how to run the new GPT models as well as fine tune those GPT models. In the case where we're just loading the model and running it given a prompt, most of the time the output of the model is not useful outside of entertainment purposes. For example, we may structure our prompt in such a way that it resembles a chat between two people on a computer. If the model works well, the model will figure out what's going on and respond in an appropriate way. We can call this zero shot learning. It's learning what to do without having any previous examples after we load the model. To truly have a GPT model that is useful in a specific application, typically we have to fine tune it for a specific task as I've gone over in previous videos. However, Outside of zero shot learning and fine tuning a model on a specific task, there is something called few shot learning. And language models are few shot learners is the official title of the paper that introduced the world to GPT-3. I'll briefly read the first few sentences as I think it captures the essence of what few shot learning is very well. Recent work has demonstrated substantial gains on many NLP tasks and benchmarks by pre-training on a large corpus of text followed by fine tuning on a specific task. What this means is we first trained GPT models on a large data set and then we fine tuned them as I've gone over in previous videos. While typically task agnostic in architecture, this method still requires task specific fine tuning data sets of thousands or tens of thousands of examples. By contrast, humans can generally perform a new language task from only a few examples or from simple instructions, something which current NLP systems still largely struggle to do. So basically what this is saying is that Requiring fine tuning is not ideal because we may not have a data set of thousands or tens of thousands of examples. Ideally, just like humans, we could just show these AI systems a few examples and then the AI systems would perform as expected. Just like a small child that has never seen a certain animal before, if you show the child a few photos of that animal, it will likely be able to correctly identify that animal if it encounters it in the future. So that is the core idea behind few shot learning. The paper goes on to discover that larger NLP models are better at few shot learning. So for the rest of the video, we'll be exploring the largest public GPT model, GPT-J6B, and exploring few shot learning with that model. So here we have the web app that I showed off in my previous video of the fake news generator. We're going to be using it for few shot learning. Currently in the back end, we have the non fine tuned GPTJ 6B model loaded. For the few shot learning demonstration, I wanna go over three scenarios. In all three scenarios, you don't have much data to train on. So fine tuning is not an option. But what you want the model to do is too complex for zero shot learning. The three scenarios I'm going to go over are sentiment analysis, Sentiment analysis being, given a sentence, we need the model to classify whether the sentence is a positive sentence, a neutral sentence, or a negative sentence. Question and answering. Question and answering being, given a few sentences of context, we want then to be able to ask the model a question, and then of course we want the model to have been able to understand the content and understand the question and give the correct answer to that question. And lastly, code generation given a sentence somewhat like OpenAI's codex. So let's first get started with the sentiment analysis few shot learning. In the prompt area now, we can see the structure of the sentiment analysis few shot learning. So we give it several examples where we give it the text and then we say the sentiment. So I hit it, my phone battery dies, of course negative, my day has been thumbs up, it's positive. 
This is the link to the article. That's kind of neutral. Smiles is positive. Sad is negative. Happy, positive. Today is January 1st is neutral. This new music video was incredible. That's a positive sentence. And for all of these, the triple hashtags mark the end of the entry. So we'll go ahead and add that here. So for this demonstration, we have eight examples of sentences or words and then them being given a rating of positive, negative, or neutral. Let's go ahead and add one that is not yet been rated. We added the text. He is 21 years old. And what do you think that is? I'm going to go ahead and say that is neutral. Let's see what the model says. Before hitting enter, I'm going to lower the repetition penalty to 1.0, meaning no penalty. I'm going to reduce the max length to 40-ish, just so it runs quicker. I'm going to reduce the temperature to 0.1. Now let's hit submit and see what it says. And it says neutral as expected. Let's go ahead and add another one. Let's do, she is very pretty. And let's see what the sentiment is. It should say positive, right? And it does. So as we can see, with less than 10 examples, we can make a sentiment classifier using few shot learning with GPTJ. Let's go ahead now and look at the second scenario. That is, we want a Q&A model. Here we have three examples, the content, the question, and the answer, and we have that three times. So the first content is about Google and its founders, when it was founded, and the like. The second content is about Hugging Face, and then the third content is about the New York Jets, and we can see that it gives a question for all of them and then an answer. So again, just like the previous scenario, let's go ahead and add data that does not have an answer. The next few examples I got from the top Wikipedia articles for the past couple weeks. And as you probably know, Afghanistan has been in the news. So here we have the content sentences, which just tells you about where Afghanistan is located and what countries border it. And the question we ask is, what countries border Afghanistan? And let's see what it says. And it says Pakistan, Iran, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, and China. And that is correct. Let's go ahead and add another question to see how it does. This one was about the Summer Olympics, the 2020 Summer Olympics. And here's the content sentence. And then we ask it, where did the 2020 Summer Olympics take? Let's see what it says. Tokyo, Japan. That is also correct. Lastly, let's add one more. This one is about Andrew Cuomo, who was the 56th governor until recently. Uh, and that's what it says here. So we say, and the question, Andrew Cuomo was governor of what state? Let's see what it says. New York, and of course that is correct. So again, with less than 10 examples, we were able to take a GBTJ model that has not been fine-tuned and make it act as a question-answer model. One that reads the content and then is asked a question and can give an accurate answer. Amazing, honestly. Lastly, let's go over a scenario that is similar to OpenAI's Codex model, that is, Let's set it up so that we can give the model a sentence and then it writes code that accomplishes the task described in that sentence. Here we have two examples. Both are relatively simple. The first one, the text is, write a function that adds two numbers and returns it. And we have num1, num2, adds it and returns it. And then the second one is a bit more complex. Uh, I use these a lot in my code. They are argument parsers. And they're pretty simple, but they're often annoying to write. So I thought it'd be cool to test it out, uh, describing it with just words. And so we say, write an argument parser with the arguments dash F that takes a string and has a default value of none, and dash N that takes an integer and has a default value of one. And the code here is valid Python, parser equals argparse. We set the 
dash f flag, we make it a type string, default none, dash n, default one, it's a type integer. And now, just given those two examples, let's go ahead and add our own new text and see how it performs. So what we've added here is write a function that adds three numbers and returns it. So very similar to the first one that added two numbers and returns it. But let's go ahead and run that. And we see, here we go, it works. This would be valid Python. Num1, 2, and 3, and adds it and returns it. Let's go ahead and make this, I don't know, let's say five numbers. And of course, it, this, this is valid Python, it works. So, amazing so far. Let's go ahead now and try something much harder in my opinion. I gave it the text, write an argument parser with the arguments dash m that takes a string and has a default value of dot slash model. Uh, let's go ahead and see what that writes. Submit it. And parser dot add argument dash m default is dot model and it's a string uh, that that is correct that's exactly what we asked for for the last example of using gptj few shot learning on code generation let's give it a very hard example we're going to have the same dash m and give it a dot slash model but also we're going to give it a another argument called save interval that takes a float and has a default value of 2.5 and then we're going to give it a dash save output that takes an integer and a default value of one. Let's see if it's able to generate proper code using only a few shot learning. And it has. This code is valid code for what we described. We have our arguments. They have their correct default values. They're the correct type. It's all good. And all this was done with less than 10 examples using few shot learning. So after going over these three scenarios, here are a few takeaways. First, I hope you now see that few shot learning is very powerful, especially for when you have very few examples and can't fine tune a model due to that. Second, there is no reason why even with a large data set, you can't use few shot learning. One could first fine tune a model and then after fine tuning it, use few shot learning as a way to prompt the model to produce outputs one desires. For example, while code was included in the pile data set, which is the data set that GBTJ was trained on, I am certain that if it was given more code to train on, that it would perform even better than what was displayed here in the video today. So at this point, I'm gonna to end today's video. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. I plan on making more content related to GPT models, AI, and technology in general. So if that's something that you're interested in, it definitely would be a good idea to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching and please have a great day.